Greetings to one and all. I trust you are safe and well. I am your facilitator for this morning. Mr. Khan from FET College, TVET College, Ungumimulovo, Pirimiara's work. Today we were looking at Report 191, Building in Civil Technology, N3. Our topic for discussion is Module 10, Finishing. More specifically, we're going to be using and we're going to be looking at doors. Finishing of a project is the ultimate goal and focus of any contractor. The finish of a product is very important and it shows the kind of workmanship that has been involved in the project. Remember, a contractor is judged by his finish. Examples of areas of finishing are as follows. Floors, walls, plastering, painting, tiling. Those are some of the areas that we have when it comes to finishing. Other areas can include cornices, ceilings, paving, all those fall under finishing. To get the complete building finished so you can hand over the keys. But today more especially we're going to be looking at floors, in particular a suspended wooden floor. What is a suspended wooden floor? A suspended wooden floor is a raised floor made of timber. A suspended wooden floor must have the following. It must be damp proof. So in other words, it must not have any moisture penetration. It must have a wall plate. It's a piece of timber that has DPC on it or damp proof causing on it. And is joined together by nails. We have a floor joist. We have floorboards and ventilation. Ventilation in order to prevent rotting of wood, preventing moisture from eating the wood, and so on and so forth. So for today's lesson, we're going to look at what we call a suspended wooden floor. We know the suspended wooden floor is important. Why is it important? How is it important? Floor finishing. Laminated floors. Laminated floors are basically when we've completed the floor, what we place on top. So we can put laminated floors on top. We can put parquet floors on top, tongue and groove floors, and we can use PVC tiles, clay tiles, carpeting, those are all finishing off, wooden floors. Granulitic floors. Granulitic floors commonly are used in South Africa and used extensively overseas as well. What is a granulitic floor? It's made up of a layer of river sand mixed with cement and water. We call it screed. So once you place your concrete, you place a layer of screed over your floor, making it smooth, making it finish, making it complete. Now that we understand what a suspended floor is, we understand how floors are finished, we're going to look at a practical example of drawing a wooden suspended floor and why a wooden suspended floor might be needed. Once again, people, not to scale. All drawings are not to scale. You have been called in by a client or you at home yourself need extra space. But you cannot move out of your building line because if you extend sideways, you're going to infringe on other people's boundaries. You do not have enough space, but you have space to go up. Unfortunately, the cost of building going up, putting a slab and that is going to be too costly for you. So you call in a civil engineer, you call in your builder and advise you as follows. We have a simple structure of a house. We all went to preschool, so we know how to draw a house. Okay, house has a roof. We have internal walls. All we do with this here to create space is we're creating what we call an attic. So if you remember from past exercises, we have a king post, we have a queen, we have a strut. The same thing applies on either side. So by removing the ceiling, by shortening that king post, by removing the struts, reinforcing that structure there, we're creating space on the top for a room. That's what we're going to look at. How do we create that space for a suspended wooden floor? It all starts from the ground up. So vertical section of a suspended wooden floor will look as follows. So we're going to do a 
vertical section. Okay. So first of all, we start with our foundation, and our foundation is made out of concrete. We have a foundation wall going up. That's my foundation wall. Okay. We have our NGL, natural ground level. We have our hard core. We have our concrete floor, which is now inside the building. Now remember we're doing this to scale, but obviously we cannot draw scale on our board, so we'll continue that drawing. Okay. Now the client calls you in and says, listen, I need to do a suspended wooden floor because I need to create space. According to building regulations, your internal room or your internal dimensions must not be less than 2.6 meters for head clearance. So you have our roof structure on top, we've got it here. So from here going up, the client tells you, okay, from here going up, this is my normal living area, I have 2.7 meters. From here going up into the roof, I have again 2.7 meters. Okay, so we know we've got enough space. So what happens here is that we place what is called, first of all, a sleeper wall. A sleeper wall is built against an existing wall, against an existing wall. This is normally built out of brick and it's tied into the wall using ties. So that built on to the existing concrete foundation. From that concrete foundation, we build a wall on top. So this is called our sleeper wall. Specifications are given to you and you will draw it according to specifications that's required. From our sleeper hole wall, we have what is called a wall plate. Followed by what we call a floor joist. Okay. Now this is where we have the suspended wooden floor. Now this portion is the suspended wooden floor. Why? Because we have the sleeper wall, we've created the space. This is my normal living area here. From here, today, 2 meters 700. If I go up with this here, before I get to my roof, again, 2 meters 700. So I've created space for me to live and extend without going to step or putting a concrete slab on there and extending sidewards, All right? So for now, we'll just erase this. So we, here we have is floor joist, okay. On the floor joist, to finish it, we can put screening, we can put tiles, we can put tongue and groove, which is the normal, so here on this floorboard, we put what is called tongue and groove, T and G. Again, tongue and groove, example of tongue and groove. We have the situation here where we have a piece of timber. That is shaped like that. Next piece of timber coming over. fitting in here. So this is the tongue, this is the groove. The one locks into the other one, forming a seal. So tongue and groove on top, then we can tile, we can pave, we can do whatever we want to on top there. So this is basically portion of how the suspended wall floor works. Now what we need to remember is that our pieces of timber are 5.5 meters in length. I will use this as a simple example. This ruler, if it's 5.5 meters in, what's going to happen is it's going to start bending. 
At some point, it will start bending. That will actually compromise the floor structure. So what we need to put in there, we need to put what is called a bare wall. So we extend this here. And bearers normally are put plus minus two meters away. We put a bearer, which is a piece of timber. And we put a brick pier coming up here. Okay, so let us illustrate or take this out here. So here we have a brick pier. Here we have a bearer. Okay. My wall plate is normally 114 by 38 millimeters. My bearer also 114 by 38 millimeters. Okay. So in other words, if I'm looking at a piece of timber, the first piece of timber is my wall plate. My wall plate goes horizontally. The 114 will go horizontally. That's the 38. If I'm using it as a bearer, I flip it over. The 114 now goes vertically. Right. So this will support the piece of timber that's going across the room. Across the room from one end of the room to the other end of the room to allow it not to flex and bend. Okay, so we have that there. Now remember, remember here we said, and just that, go that way there. Okay, we said that we need to allow for ventilation here because wood in moisture it rots. When wood attracts moisture it rots. So what we do here on the outside we place what is called an air brick. So when they are building, when our wooden floor comes in, we replace it with an air brick. The wall going up, that's an air brick. So air flows into the room. On the inside, we have a air vent. Air brick. OK? So that is what a wooden floor looks like. Okay, guys, let's go through the suspended wooden floor again. Now, remember we said we're looking at the vertical section. And the reason we're going through this again, very important, is that we cover this in building drawing and it's covered in civil technology. So you need to understand this here. In an examination, could be worth up to 20 marks to you. Okay, so let's go. We have my foundation. Your foundation wall coming up. National ground level. Hardcore. So here we have hardcore, we have concrete floor, okay, this concrete floor can have screeching on it, right, now we called in to do a suspended wooden floor. Client calls you and says, listen, I need space. I need space. So we go about doing space for him. All this is on the wall. This, remember, is plaster. The wall has been plastered internally. That's how it looks. That's my wall. That's my vertical section. So we remove plaster to a certain point, or we do not have to remove as well. We build my wall. Wall plate, this here is referred to as a sleeper wall. OK, 
Okay, then we have the wall plate. Then we have the floor joist. On the floor joist we have my tongue and groove boards. We can have internal plaster again. Plaster again. Okay. Now, remember we said to support this floor joist because of the length we need to put a bearer, which is exactly the same size as the wall plate, but we flipped it around. We said the first one, horizontally, is 114. But now when we flip it around for a bearer, it's 114 vertically. 114 vertically. So 114 vertically and we build a brick pier. Build a brick pier. So this wall is supported level, or oh, sorry, this floor is supported level on both sides. Okay, we've got my floor joist, we've got my TNGs, the bearer, supports the floor joist, né? which goes across the entire room. Now we need to allow ventilation to come in here. So what we do on the outside, we open the wall a bit, place an air brick, air to circulate, and once air circulates, the air will go under the floors in order to provide it so it keeps it dry. The timber is dry, does not rot. A brick. Right. Should they go further and ask us for what you call an ant guard, remember white ants eat wood. If it eats wood, take care of the wood. So what we do here, we place an ant guard across the wall. Today's modern society, modern technology we use, we use a paint on product. But previous to this, or prior to this, they used to make this out of copper, where they used to make a kind of a a shield, you could call it. It was made out of copper and was placed over. So it was placed over the wall. The wall in the center. So the idea was the ant will walk up. He'll come to that point. I can't go around. He'll fall down. Right? So therefore, they call it an ant gun going on either side. So here we'll have ant guard to protect the white ants from going up. So guys, that is your vertical section of your suspended wooden floor and a brief outline of how it works and what happens. Right, now that we've looked at the suspended wooden floor and how it actually works, we're going to look at some examples of wooden floors. On the screen in front of you, you can see that we have a wooden floor. We can see part of the wall. Now this wall plate has been fixed onto the wall. We can see the wall was 330, reduced to 220 internally. Wall plate, floor joist, floor boards coming in, and the rest of completing the building. On the other side, we can see that we have what is called a binder. So the binder is connected or attached to the floor joist. Now below the binder is what we place is we place our ceiling boards. So we place our ceiling board below that. So it acts as though as it a suspended ceiling. Okay, so that is one way of them asking us also to draw a wooden floor. The other way they can ask us to draw a wooden floor is a wooden floor, as the next slide represents, is in a concrete slab. Where we have a concrete slab, we have an existing floor, but the client doesn't want to tie, he doesn't want to carpet, he doesn't want to do anything on the floor, but he wants wood. So in order to do that, we need to connect what we call our floor battens. 
the flow battens are spaced apart. Normal flow battens are spaced apart plus minus 300 to 400 millimeters apart. Why? In order for the floorboards not to break. We can see here that we've got flow battens. The flow battens are placed, like I said, between 300 and 400 millimeters apart from each other, center to center, creating a space beneath the floorboards. This space is very, very important as this allows for air to flow. If we don't have air flowing in there, we'll have moisture developing and moisture will rot the wood, leading to the wood structure or the flooring being damaged more quickly. So there's another way they can ask us on a wooden floor. This wooden floor is connected to a concrete slab. So, so far, let's recap. We've discussed a suspended wooden floor. We've discussed finishing of floors. We've discussed some types of floors that we get, how they could ask us a question. So we need to be afraid with how and what they're going to ask us. That brings us to the end of this session for today. But before we leave, there's a little exercise I'd like you to do. The specifications are as follows. We're going to be doing a suspended wooden floor. Specifications are as follows. We have a foundation wall, 990 millimeters by 40 milli 440 millimeters. Foundation wall, 330 millimeters. The foundation wall goes up five courses. External wall is 220 millimeters. You have a hard core of 150 millimeters. You have a concrete slab of 150 millimeters. You have screed of 50 millimeters. You have a sleeper wall of 220 millimeters on the concrete floor. You have a wall plate, 114 millimeters by 38 millimeters. You have a floor joist of 114 by 38 millimeters. The specifications again, foundation wall, 990 by 440, foundation wall 330 millimeters, five courses high, external wall 220, hardcore 150, concrete slab 150, screed 50, sleeper wall 220 millimeters, wall plate 114 by 38, floor joist 114 by 38, floor boards 100 millimeters by 16 millimeters, tongue and groove, your bearer is 114 by 38 millimeters, your brick pier is 110 millimeters. Your internal plaster, 19 millimeters. Floorboards, 100 by 16. Bearer, 114 by 38. Your brick pier is 110. Your internal plaster is 19 millimeters. Remember from what we've learned, what we've covered, you need to apply that together and draw the following drawing that has been given to you. Now that you've received the specifications on the suspended wooden floor, practice that roughly. Remember, don't draw to scale. It's a rough sketch for understanding purposes. We start off with the foundation. The foundation is 990 by 440. We have the foundation wall, which is 330. So my foundation wall is 330. Remember we said five causes high, one, two, three, four, it's one, two, three, four, five causes high, that's there. We have hard core 150, and we know that the brick cause is 75 millimeters, ne? So 75, 75 is 150, so that's my hard core. Okay, then we've got our concrete slab of 150 millimeters. One fifty millimeters. Then we've got screed, fifty millimeter screed. Fifty millimeter screed. Then we've got our sleeper wall. Now it says the sleeper wall is two twenty. The sleeper wall is two twenty. So the sleeper wall. Let's go sleeper wall. 
and it says it's sitting on a concrete floor. Ne? So there's my sleeper wall. Sleeper wall. From this sleeper wall, we said we've got a wall plate. From the wall plate, we have our floor joist. Floor joist. From the floor joist, we have our floor boards. Floor boards. Okay. Then they gave us to say that our bearer is 114 by 38. Remember the bearer goes on this end here because it's separating or reinforcing. That's my bearer. My brick pier. It comes onto the floor. That's my brick pier. And that's all they asked us. Then they asked us for internal plaster 19 millimeter. So our internal plaster will cover that piece of timber that was sticking out here. And we're done, people, according to the specs they gave us. If they asked us for uh, air brick, we were put in the air brick. If they asked us for iron guard, we were put in the iron guard. If they asked us for anything else, we would have given them anything else. We can additionally add your plaster here as well. Because they talk about internal, they don't specify where. So 19 millimeter plaster there, 19 millimeter plaster there, and we've done. That's it, people. I thank you and be safe.